So I literally got called out the other day because it took me about a year and a half to commit to the idea of having a reading journal after I kind of really started to get into reading. Whereas two weeks into my new kind of like, I'm going to be a bit more healthy kick, I'm like, yeah, I need a physical health journal. <laughs> so that's what we're doing today. We're not actually setting it up, we're just planning it out because I think that the planning stage is so important. You know, making sure that the journal is actually going to fit the need that you have for it, making sure that it has all of the layouts and stuff that you want, thinking about the kind of design elements, like do we want to make it more decorative, do we want to make it more simple, kind of as a way to um, make sure that we actually use it, all right? Because I know that if my journal isn't a little bit decorative, I am less inclined to use it, but I don't want it to be like so decorated that it just becomes kind of more like an arts and crafts project, and then I spend all my time doing that rather than working on myself. But the general gist is, I started writing out a little list of ideas, like, hey, you know, if I had some health journal, like, you know, layouts, uh, what would I actually include? And it kind of got to the point where I'm just like, okay, maybe we need to consider this as like a separate journal, kind of more like a physical health reference book and log rather than like specifically like trackers but we will get to that in a second I'm thinking of this kind of size journal for it though I want to keep it small I want to keep it manageable so this is a b6 size notebook from Archer and Olive uh, my other b6 that I'm like currently using is my go wild journal because it's just like nice and small like very transportable so if we compare this to an a5 here so you can see that the a5 is a decent bit bigger we're like get out of the way <laughs> show the good people what's on there we go so that's an a5 this is the size of a b6 so you can see it is a little bit smaller both like vertically and horizontally so i thought it might just make it a little bit more manageable but let me know what are you doing today while we're you know going through and planning this out are you planning a journal for yourself are you just setting up for the week are you just hanging out chilling are you doing laundry i'd love to know but I'm tucking this guy to the side because, I mean, this isn't even the right journal, so we don't don't need that, certainly. Uh, what we will need, though, is a planning page, which I'm just going to do in my scribble book. And we also are going to have a look at some ideas that we've shared previously. Now, this one is linked in the description box. Uh, it is a video that I made oof, a couple years ago now, but it was all about different layouts that you could include in your journal as related to your physical well-being. So whether that be kind of like, you know, fitness in terms of like exercise or whether it be kind of like foodie stuff related. So we're going to have a flip through this guy and have a look at some of the ideas that we have. Um, if you just wanted the ideas strictly and explained in the most succinct way, then that video is the one to check out. We're going to be using this as kind of an inspiration space to plan an actual journal that I might actually set up. So flipping over here. Let's see, we're doing simple work. We're making lunch because it's 1 p.m. Excellent. Greetings from Seattle. Greetings from Wellington, New Zealand. Pleasure. Uh, you should do the laundry, but you won't do that now. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, I need to think about when I'm going to be doing my laundry this week because usually I do laundry on a Thursday. So, you know, like every Thursday is the day that I have like the least amount of clothes that are clean so that I do my washing and then you know, the cycle repeats. I'm leaving on Wednesday afternoon this week though, which means that we're kind of edging towards the time period where I have the least number of clean clothes, but I actually need the most clean clothes so that I can pack while, you know, for my, my trip away. So something to think about. If you're wondering why this journal looks a little bit strange, it's because the front cover has become like ripped off. Uh, I did initially tape it together with this washi, but the washi ripped as well. So it just it just hangs out down here. It doesn't really bother me so much though, because this is just an R&D journal, just like full of different journaling ideas and such. So it's not one that I kind of like, you know, take out of the house and take away with me or anything like that. Because yeah, <laughs> let's see, either writing or watching Yashi or Mark or Erin while journaling and working. Nice. Oh, aloha from Hawaii. I so want to go Hawaii. Vogel wants to really go to Hawaii one day. But so in the video that I did on physical health related layouts, uh, you can see effectively I just set up a bunch of different pages related to them. They weren't necessarily all um, like full page designs. They might have been just like smaller ones as well. But we're going to kind of go through these and I'm going to think about which ones would actually be helpful for me. Which ones do I want to pull into my physical health journal list? Now, before I start writing things down here, I think what I might want to do is set up rather than sections because previously I used things like sections here to show like you know things that liked or didn't like or whatever 
I'm going to set it up based on this, right? So the aspects of physical health are nutrition, hydration, sleep, exercise, hygiene, and avoiding harm. And I want to think about like, well, in terms of taking care of my physical health, my physical well-being, what types of layouts do I want to set up as related to each of those? Um, we also might have just like an other category as well for anything that doesn't quite fit into that. But by categorizing them as I go through, it means that when I come to order the pages in the notebook, I have a little bit of a structure. When I order pages in a notebook, I really like to make sure that they are uh, grouped by type as much as possible, also grouped by like, you know, frequency of use and stuff like that. But it's like, I want all of the pages that are kind of like related to hydration together, all of the ones related to nutrition together, wherever possible. Um, at least for the initial setup, I suppose. I think I'm probably going to need an index in this journal, so that's something to note down. But I'll just write these labels out along the top. We're going to pick here. So other. And what we did have a question of, are you ready to go to go wild? I'm like, nope, absolutely not. Um, I have kind of let it slip my mind but also not in a way that it's really kind of coming up quite soon. Uh, in my my head, it's like, oh, yeah, I've still got like a month. I don't have a month. I have two days <laughs> until I leave. So I do need to get on to quite a few things in terms of my organization, but I haven't got there yet. It's, it's top of the to-do list. I need to think about, you know, the content that I want to have released while I'm away and getting that prepared and stuff like that, uh, whether that be for like YouTube or be for like memberships and things, but it is on, on my radar, but this live stream is first. Yeah, that's right. You guys come first. <laughs> so we have hygiene, hygiene, which I always have trouble spelling and then avoiding harm, which talking about avoiding harm. Oh my gosh. My friends came over for cocktail night the other day and I was kind of like, look, could put myself in charge of food because I always do I think that making food for people and having them enjoy it is like my love language but I was like trying to balance a tray on one hand while opening the oven with the other and so I've got the hot tray in the mid in one hand and then leant forward to open the oven and like burnt my arm not like majorly and I'm not going to show you but it was painful <laughs> like would not recommend so in terms of our little columns here, we've kind of just set it up like a little Alistair method. So as I go through and write down my ideas, I can just put a dot underneath whichever column is relevant. So for instance, the dot underneath other, and this is just like an idea. So we can say like, I will need to have an index because this is not the type of journal that is going to be like in a chronological order. Uh, my everyday journals, I don't use an index because it's just like, you know, January, then February, then March. And you know, that's pretty much all there is. So it's not as bad. Let's see. So, ooh, you're in North Texas. You're out of town while you're here. That's so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> oh what a bummer I am I am so excited to actually have like our little like JCC meetup in Texas that's going to be a really good time so if you are in the Texas region or or you know around Arlington in particular then we would love to have you come out and see us we're meeting up on Thursday at 2 p.m Texas time um until about like 5 p.m ish so if you can't make it for 2 p.m like it's cool you could you can come a little bit later <laughs> um but it would be really great to see you if you're going to the concert or not concert come on conference or, or otherwise so we've got our you know start of our list uh this is just kind of like a breakdown of what the aspects of physical health are and i kind of like having the reference so i might put that in so i'm gonna put it down aspects of physical health mainly because I have a tendency whenever I think physical health I just default to exercise and nutrition like I just don't really think about the other stuff but there is other stuff related to our physical well-being so having a reminder there might be a good idea I don't think I'll set it up in this way because you know this isn't really probably the style that I'm going for but it worked for the layout that I was trying to make um so I think that I'm going to have some kind of like a reference page. A lot of this journal is going to be about reference. Uh, so that's a good start. We have a physical stats page and I'm not opposed to having stats, but I personally find it really bloody difficult to measure this, like to actually measure like 
probably neck would be fairly easy, but like bicep, bust, waist, all of that, actually getting the measuring tape like level in line is quite tricky. So I'm probably not going to do that. Um, I think that I'm going to keep that one out of it uh, just because I don't think that I would actually keep up with it because I do find it challenging. We had the question about mental health. Yes, mental health is very important too, uh, but it's not what's going in this journal. This journal is going to be specifically about like my physical well-being. But the thing is, is like if you take care of your physical well-being, then it does have an impact on your mental well-being. So although it's not necessarily the target of this journal, it will end up having an impact on my mental well-being. I think that the majority of my like mental well-being stuff already kind of sits in my everyday journal anyway because like you know mind unwinds and brain dumps and just like di downloading thoughts and like long form journaling and all of that kind of stuff like those happen in other places so not the plan for this one but so resting heart rate I don't feel the need to track <laughs> other things so this is all just about physical stats I don't think I'm gonna do body measurements or heart rate but there are some other ones here so we have blood pressure which i'm not going to measure uh weight bmi heart rate variability blood glucose levels um vo2 max drug volume of oxygen i suppose uh body fat percentage cholesterol levels so these are things that i don't necessarily get checked regularly but i do know that my doctor uses bmi still and i know that bmi is like you know influenced by a whole bunch of things and stuff and it's like you know not necessarily the best measurement of things but i still think that having a reference for it would still be useful because it is a system that is used still quite widely so we're going to put that down as a thing, especially because I'm not getting any taller. Uh, so then having it there just as a reference might be good. So reference. We can think about weight I'm not going to put in, honestly, because I find that every time I do, I don't use it. So we're just gonna we're just gonna not put it in. Um, if I want to track my weight, I will do it in another format. Just because previous weight trackers, I have gotten like maximum maybe five weeks into it, and then just fallen off with it. So I don't see the point of setting up a page that has a history of failure. So flipping over, we have physical health goals. I think that that would be a good thing to put in there, in particular. Even if it's just a write out of like what the goal is without the plan, um, because the plan is probably in my goals journal. Physical health goals. Now, yeah, thinking on that kind of thought, if you have uh, as many journals as I do, uh, you might be inclined to duplicate information to pad out a journal. That's up to you. You know, just, just think about, like, is that something that will still be valuable? Will you keep up with it? Uh, will you, you know, actually make the best use of it? Or will you find that duplicating information is just going to be, like, a hassle and take too much time and then you're just not going to keep things up to date, right? Like, we are individuals. We can do things that actually suit us, hopefully. So I'm going to put that here. We're going to put that in other because it's not technically related to anything else. So goal planning probably not because we've got a separate goals journal for that we can put it down as like an afterthought with a question mark planning question mark i find that something that i've been doing recently for like my physical health goals in particular is writing down a lot of notes about like kind of research related to things so i think that a lot of my goal research is going to go into this journal it's not necessarily going to go into the other one because it's just going to take up like pages and pages so maybe we can put down like goal research instead s-e-a-r-c-h Alrighty. so next one is a doctor appointments log slash index i think that might actually be a good idea uh mainly because I don't do a very good job of either like, you know, taking notes at my doctor appointments currently or remembering what we talk about after the fact. So I guess that's kind of related to avoiding harm in a way. It depends on what we kind of talk about. <laughs> like, um, so doctor appointment log. So I can think about like, you know, what did we discuss? Was there anything I had to do as related to that? Anything like that. 
Um, we then have medical notes, so things about medications, things about allergies. I don't have a lot of allergies, so I don't really feel a need to write down notes about them. Like, if this was a kind of journal that I was taking around with me or something, uh, one where, like, maybe if something happens out in public and people need to know that information about me to, like, hand it off to a doctor, then, like, yeah, I, I could put something in about that. Um, you know, just general contact details for like next of kin or like who my medical providers are or any insurance numbers or like whatever. But this journal is not going to come out of the house with me. So it's not as important to have that stuff in it, I suppose, just based on how it's going to be used. Um, medications. Could have a medications log, maybe. We'll put it down. And that's, a, again, one that's kind of, like, about avoiding harm. When I'm thinking avoiding harm here, that could be something like stretching, for instance. So it's, like, you stretch to increase your flexibility, which means that when you do movement, uh, it, it's less likely to cause you harm or pain. Um, it could be stuff like, I know, your regular checkups with your doctor, dentist, optometrist, whatever else, to make sure that, like, your eye health, you know, whatever health is still good, depending on which doctor you're going to. Probably not going to your dentist for your eyes probably unless they're very very skilled so medications and like you know maybe frequency of when you need to take said medications or anything like that um you know for what period do we have to take these medications are they like you know indefinite ones or just for a set period of time so and that's that one this is that in case of emergency page we were kind of talking about. So it's like this is maybe the information that you would include on a separate piece of paper, like tipped in to the front of your journal, just like taped into the front with like a piece of washi tape or something like that. Uh, so that then if people did need it in case of emergency, they can just rip it out of your journal without having to like, you know, rip it out of your journal. <laughs> um, so that could be something that would be very useful. Not for mine, but in general. We then have a meal log and meal planner. I am not going to include this in here, even though I know it'll be valuable. But the reason that I'm not going to is because that is going to be in my everyday journal. All right, so in my everyday journal, if we bring that guy over, you can see we have my little routine builder down the bottom here. We have the meal log and I just write down the stuff that I've been eating, like, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and, and a list of what the stuff is. Um, I don't think I need to have it duplicated, uh, mainly because I find it hard to keep up with in general. I've done a pretty good job this fortnight of keeping up with it, though. So at least there's that. Um, and then in terms of the routines, I don't really want to have any kind of, like, daily touch trackers in this journal, because I just don't think it's going to be that kind of journal. I think it's going to be more of like weekly touch. So I've been trying to, on Sunday mornings in particular, do kind of like a little weekly accountability meeting with myself, I suppose, uh, to see like, you know, how did you go in terms of the, the actions that you're trying to take in terms of your physical health? We are only two weeks into this process, but like, it's what I'm trying. <laughs> so let's see. You started the keto or carnival way of eating. Interesting. I, um, I have heard good things about keto in terms of, like, weight loss specifically, um, but I don't know a lot about it outside of, like, very specific ratios of, like, protein to minimal carbs or something. But in terms of meal ideas, I would like to include something related to that. I know I have that in my long-term collections journal, but I think that having it in here would be a good idea. So we're going to do meal ideas. And that could be, like, with breakdowns of, you know, different percentages of nutrients and whatever else, if I wanted it to, but I'm probably going to make it more, like, list in picture form or something. So, eating habits tracker. So, this is kind of what I've been doing in my everyday journal. So, it's like, hey, this is the date, this is the meal, this is the food, and then you can track things for, you know, after the fact or before the fact or stuff. So, like, before eating, were you actually hungry? After eating, did you, like, overeat? Were you, like, too full? And then any kind of notes. So maybe B meant, like, you know, I was bored and that's why I kind of just, like, was eating to <laughs> to try and, you know, get out of my boredom or something or have something to do. Or, like, S, maybe I was feeling sick. H for on holiday. Yeah, different, different notes that you could put down. Um, same idea with like water intake trackers. I'm not going to put any of those kind of trackers in there. I'm also not going to put in an exercise log because I know I won't keep up with it. I don't want to have to put any kind of daily 
thing in there. What I do want though is some kind of like improvements or progress log or milestones and probably for each of them separately. So we're going to say like milestones log. So this is going to be for like bigger things. But then I also would love to have a tiny wins log because I am all about tiny wins. All right, those tiny wins and just building them up one after the other and it like really just adds up to really good progress. So one of the things that I noticed um, because I've been trying to, you know, tackle at least four of the areas, so nutrition, which is my biggest struggle point, uh, exercise, sleep, and hydration. One of the things that I noticed as like a tiny win for sleep in particular was one of the days where I just woke up before my alarm um, because I've actually been setting an alarm now uh, and feeling well rested even though I had woken up before my alarm. It was kind of interesting because usually the alarm goes and I'm just like, uh, why? <laughs> But that day in particular, I you know, roll over about 10-ish minutes before the alarm and I'm just like, I'm actually just ready to get up now. And like that felt like an achievement. Like it's a small achievement. It doesn't have to be a, a huge one, but um, it was still something, you know? Let's see. You guys forgot about the live. I'm interested to see how many people did because, I mean, usually when we have the live streams, okay, so it's Monday morning for me, right? I do try and get the post up or like the watch page of this ready by like, usually Friday evening, Saturday morning at the latest. So there's like two days until it's happening. Uh, this one, I had a busy weekend. So I ended up getting it up like yesterday. So it's probably on me. I apologize. Um, tiny wins. We love tiny wins. Because we're talking about tiny wins though, we are going to bring over my other list because I said I did start writing things down. So things that I was thinking about was like some kind of like PCOS kind of like related stuff uh, because I have PCOS so this could be like PCOS research and then PCOS recommendations so the things that I find through my research that are like recommended for the management of PCOS in particular um, so that could be a thing we've already got the BMI reference so I already can like put a little arrow to say that that's been transferred somewhere else. The tiny wins log will transfer to somewhere else. Uh, PCOS Rex and quick snack ideas. I like that. So we're going to put that down and that's going to be in nutrition. Put that on the nutrition column. So quick snack ideas. I'm not very good at uh, snacks. I'm like, I don't usually snack, right? I'm not much of a snacker, but when I get into a snacky mood, it usually lasts a while. Um, and it's usually not foods that are aligned with my goals. <laughs> um, so usually it's something that comes from a packet that maybe isn't the best nutritionally. Uh, and I want to kind of try and find some options that are a little bit better for me. The problem is, it's like, you know, quick snack idea, fruit. Great. Love that. Uh, I am very prissy when it comes to my fruit. Uh, so I really prefer fruit when it is cut up. Also, great reminder, tink. Look at me drinking water. I haven't finished my bottle for the morning, so I'm going to finish that. Now we're going to, there we go, much better. Tink. I 100% understand that, Jen, because I do exactly the same thing, um, especially on a day like today where we have the live stream, and then after the live stream, I usually get set on something else that I'm working on. I can very easily not eat until like 3 p.m. until the point where like my hand starts shaking because I just haven't eaten anything um and I'm just like why am I so angry and why am I finding everything so hard it's like oh because you didn't have any food <laughs> like are you gonna do nutrition research too probably yeah we can probably put some like nutrition research notes in there too so I'm gonna put that in there nutrition research because I've had some recommendations from my doctor in terms of that. So I can probably like explore some of the things that we started talking about there as well. So <laughs> you just faint. I guess that is also a strategy, <laughs> not necessarily the best one. Like we talked about, you know, avoiding harm, <laughs> right? We, we want us to take care of ourselves. Um, I am trying to do this in, a, in very much a way that comes from like a place of like 
self-love, I suppose. It's like, you know, we're taking care of yourself because we want we want to stick around for a while, right? You'll get FOMO otherwise. You'll miss out on so much. So we want to make sure that, you know, future Jess is living the best life she possibly can because current Jess did her a favor, right? We're doing favors for our future selves. So uh, in terms of trackers, I like this idea. I don't think I need to do it i'm thinking of a, a kind of almost like a bingo board in terms of like physical health um but like bingo boards that are themed around a specific thing so it could be like you know my exercise bingo board and my nutrition bingo board like ate a cauliflower and didn't want to bath i'm never gonna approach a cauliflower though jess and cauliflower and nemesi <laughs> like it's not gonna happen any new zealand specific local stationery that you would recommend i I mean, my go-to store for stationery is usually Gordon Harris, but that's because they sell the products that are the more popular ones, like Tomos and stuff like that. And it's not necessarily um, like New Zealand specific stationery, if that makes sense. But that that is one that I use. I just had a thought and I can't remember what it was, but I was going to write it down. Do we remember what it was? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, well, it'll come back to me probably bingo there we go see i just need to look at the little boxes and there we are so health bingo and that's just another way to kind of like gamify or celebrate milestones but they're kind of like preset milestones uh health milestones i can spell milestones there we go Ooh, what a what a shiny box there you have shiba member for seven months and i know we had one before that was like a member for 15 months didn't we scrolls like 27 years back to find it there we go so matt says yay 15 months now and then yay seven months now very exciting so does new zealand have a clock change too yes uh we did have a clock change um last weekend i believe uh last weekend we went back an hour so we got an extra hour of sleep <laughs> I always think about it in terms of my sleep. <laughs> a sticker chart. Yeah, that'd be kind of cute. Let's see. Yeah, Journal Junkies is an online store, but it's not New Zealand specific stationery. You are correct. Um, and there we go. So we've got those ones down in there. That's looking pretty cute. Uh, let's see. Tracker, 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 tracker. So the next one is a fitness combo tracker. So this is thinking about like different things that you're trying to do and like tracking them together type of a deal. I don't want to do this in my health journal because it is that daily kind of touch type thing, but it could be the kind of thing that I put on a monthly or like a cyclic kind of layout so you'd have like your four weeks and then track it for each day and then your four weeks and track it for each day so the way this one works is that you have a mini calendar which you just you put like a little colored dot over each day based on different habits or routines that you're trying to build so this one is about like water intake uh workouts so like what type of exercise did you do and then dinner like did you have like fast food that wasn't so great for you did you eat out but you tried to do something that was a little better for you um, or like aligned with your goals or whatnot um, and then whatever else then we have this one here which is more about the workouts and kind of elaborating on them so you can do like you know what type of workout did you do how long did you do it for like how many calories did you in theory burn from it um, most of those are just kind of guesstimates anyways but eh. then we have like just general tracking so it's like for each of your weekly check-ins what was your weight what was your blood pressure or like anything else really depends on what you're tracking i suppose so that's that's a possible idea um i'm not going to do it though steps tracker i stopped stepping my i stopped stepping my tracks come on i stopped tracking my steps because it got depressing uh because i <laughs> live a very sedentary life oftentimes my <laughs> step count is low uh one of the other days though i was on the elliptical and i don't know what happened but my watch was just counting way too many steps at once so it's like hey you did fourteen thousand steps before 9 a.m and i'm like doubt it friendo but thanks anyway <laughs> uh so this was the big combo tracker fitness tracker weight tracker slash log not gonna put that one in there because i know i won't use it um sleepy time schedule i do like the idea of having some kind of like wind down routine or schedule and I actually think I, I liked this idea of like building in what I'm going to call like rituals I suppose um 
like what is my kind of go to sleep ritual like what is the, the the steps or process that i take to get myself ready for bed in a way that is conducive to actually getting good sleep so if we think about that in terms of the sleep column in particular so we can be like sleepy time routine sleepy time sleepy time routine and over here you can see we also have like routines for better sleep so like things that you can do so it could be like another research type moment so good sleep research because things are just easier when we are well rested <laughs> like ready for bed get good sleep yes i would like to have that be a thing i just like <sighs> Actually getting good sleep is like kind of beyond our control a lot of the time. But there's stuff that we can actually do to, you know, help us get the best sleep possible. That idea of like, you know, is it the right temperature? Have we uh, controlled the amount of light that we've been exposed to? Like all of those kind of things. So when I'm coming to these kind of like layouts, references, all of that, I am trying to keep in mind like what is actually within my control. Um, I can't control if I get a good night's sleep. I can't control specifically like how much weight I lose or I can't control like, I don't know, you guys hopefully get the idea. But the things that I can control are stuff like my exposure to screens. Like, you know, did I turn the screen off at a set time and just like walk away and go and do things that don't require screen time? Um, you know, did I wear my moon glasses, which block out blue light? Uh, did I, you know, get my workout in today? Have I drunk my water? That kind of stuff. So I'm thinking about that type of a deal. So sleep log, I'm not going to include because that's a daily touch. Sleep tracker, not going to include. That's a daily touch. Routines for better sleep. I like the idea of that. I think that this little kind of like sketch note deal is quite cute too. So possibly that. Um, in terms of a period tracker, I track my period through an app, um, mainly because then it just tells me like a rough prediction of when it's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> the statistics on that are always depressing. So I'm probably not going to include one in my physical health journal, even though it's not necessarily a daily touch. Like you hopefully don't have your period every single day and if you do you might want to get that checked out uh because bleeding that much doesn't sound like it could be good for you but yeah i'm not going to need that i'm not going to put that in same i do with blood pressure i don't measure my blood pressure like the only time i measure it is when we go to the doctor and the doctor measures it so i'm not going to include that either in terms of a symptom tracker i am intrigued with the idea of a symptom tracker i just don't know if i specifically need it at this stage but I am going to put it in it's not going to go in this journal but I just want to note down that it might be interesting to look at at some point um so s-y-m I cannot spell symptom slimp tom tracker so the way that this symptom tracker is set up is that you just have, uh, I'm sorry, I just read Jen's comment. I just yeeted my uterus. No need for that tracker. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> like a yeet. So the way the symptom tracker works, so, so we've just got a list of the different symptoms here. So whatever those symptoms are for you, you just write down whatever they are. So like bloating, headache, nausea, feeling dizzy, irritated, moody, tired, sore muscles, sore throat, not hungry, like whatever they are, anything that's relevant to you. And then you just put a dot or a check mark or a cross or something underneath the relevant column for the relevant day of the month. Uh, I've also got this here for like notes. So it's like, hey, yeah, I was feeling like bloated and headachey today. And then the next day your period started or like something like that. Um, just so that you can start to pick up on any kind of like trends or patterns. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be just like notes about your health specifically. It could be, um, you know, stuff that's kind of like a trigger or a like, I don't know, general common happening or whatever. So it's like, I don't know, worked in the office today rather than at home, came home with a headache because you were just like around too many people and they're all bloody noisy or something like that. Um, or maybe you find that when you work from home, you have less of a tendency to drink water because there's less of an excuse to get up from your desk or something. Like, you know, anything like that. Um, 
So that could be one way to do it. Another thing to note is that you can also track the kind of extent or like severity of something either by using like different colors or a different size dot or something like that. So if we think about it in terms of this one, maybe on the days that you're feeling like a little bit bloated, you do a small dot. Whereas on the days that you're feeling quite bloated, you can do a larger dot that kind of a deal. So it's like, okay, yes, I had bloating, but it was like very minimal. Um, or, you know, this, this day I felt like super, super bloated kind of a thing. Um, and then you can note down like, you know, possibly what triggered it, anything that you might think is relevant or whatnot. So that then across a time period, you can start to see what kind of things are kicking off those types of symptoms and try and possibly avoid them. So that's something. You lost your sunglasses yesterday. Hmm, that's not fun. Well, I hope they show up. It's frustrating. Let's see. Uh, what is the journal Jess is getting ideas from? This is my R&D notebook from many moons ago. When did it start? This is my research and development bujo from February 2021 to March 2022. So this is just a bunch of ideas that I've set up and shared on the channel at previous points in time. Uh, so this video was about like weekly ideas and things you can include. That was lettering and headers and anything else. This was all about future logs and different styles of future logs that you can include. Um, this was about grid guides and about like different sizing guides you could put in. This was about moving related layouts. So like rather than setting up all of these pages in my everyday journal, I set them up in here instead so that then I actually <laughs> have space in my uh, everyday journal to, to put things in because when I make idea videos, I usually make quite a few ideas. These ones were all related to like student related stuff. This is different types of habit trackers. I loved this video so much and it, you know, I'm going to say it. It doesn't get as much love as it deserves. This was a great video. <laughs> this one in particular. <laughs> I think this one was about different types of habit trackers or something. Or no, this one. This one was about combo trackers, the idea of like tracking multiple things at the same time. So for instance, like your sleep versus your productivity and about like, you know, notes about the day with your habits or like multiple things at once over a multi-line tracker or a multi-bar tracker or whatnot. It was just a great video. I felt very good about it. There's not, there's not so many videos where I got to get to the end of them and I genuinely think like this was actually like a stellar piece of work. Most of them I think they're good, otherwise I wouldn't put them out because, you know, I'm not going to put out like just crap onto the internet. That sounds a bit silly, but that one I felt good about. Anywho, so symptom tracker, I, I'm thinking about it, possibly not in my, uh, on my physical health journal, maybe in my everyday journal, but it's kind of cute. So healthy habits tracker, again, don't want to put anything in that's a daily touch. <laughs> Bingo. Um, healthy challenge tracker, uh, that one's again more like a daily touch type deal, but it's like focusing on one specific routine that you're trying to build, so I'm not going to do that. I like the idea of a skincare routine. Um, so this one, I suppose, could be put into like possibly hygiene, I suppose, if it's, you're thinking about like, you know, like the hygiene side of skincare, or it could just be in the idea of like avoiding harm and such like that. Like put your sunscreen on so that you don't get sunburnt. Don't touch the hot oven tray so that you don't get literally burnt. Uh, so we're going to put that in here and there's hygiene and avoiding harm as skin care routines. Because another thing that I kind of often both forget and then remember, I suppose. <laughs> it's like a cycle um, when it comes to physical health or like physical well-being, I suppose, is that stuff that we do for ourselves that just makes us physically feel good. Like, for instance, going and getting your nails done, right? Like it is a self-maintenance type activity. Uh, it isn't necessarily going to make you live longer, but it is something that you do to feel good in your skin kind of a thing. Um, not that I often ever get my nails done because my nails grow too quickly which means that you spend like you know however many dollars to get your nails painted or whatever and then after two days you already have trenches um because they just grew out so I don't, I don't want to do that but something that I like to think about it's like okay well what are those other kind of like self-care routines that aren't necessarily these ones related but put that aside. We've already got the bingo. We've already put the other one. And then we're on to resolution ideas, which I think this one was my first video slash blog post that I did for Archer and Olive. And then after that, we've just got a bunch of other stuff. So 
those are the physical health ideas from this journal. We're going to have a look at the other one, um, just because there might be some other ideas. I don't think there are, though. I think they're repeats. But we can check. We can check. We can check. So this guy is another <laughs> R&D notebook, funnily enough. Um, and this one I did a series of like 12, 12 sets of 12 was the idea. So like 12 reading journal ideas and 12 physical health ideas and 12 mental health ideas uh, for your notebook. This was done as kind of like a um, 12 days of Christmas type deal. So it was like a, a um, vlogmas series. So other ideas we had in here were don't break the chain. So it's like every time that you do a particular habit, routine or whatever that you're trying to do, uh, you put a little dot in the box. But as soon as you don't do it, you have to change color. So that then the idea is that you're like trying to build up the like you know, the longest chain possible uh, using that single color. So it's like, oh yeah, January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, yada, yada, yada. At this point in January, we fell off. So we put a black dot. It didn't happen. And then we start with a new color. Oh, we go through, we go through, up, oh, black because we fell off. And then another color, so on and so forth. It just kind of helps with like that idea of one, we want to make the chain as long as we possibly can. And two, we don't want to start building like a new habit with the whole like, you know, not getting the thing done. Uh, so we don't want like two black dots in a row, for instance. We just want to keep it at one black dot, get back on that horse tomorrow, keep on keeping on. Uh, better health mind map. I like the idea of it. What I actually want <laughs> is effectively like a habit menu. Which is just another way of saying, like, what are the different ways that I can work on each of these six things? Um, so, in particular, I think I want a habit menu for hydration more than anything else. Because drinking water is something that I find challenging. So, I would like to... Huh, talking about drinking water, we should probably have a sip. Um, but I'd like different ways to get my water intake up. Tink. Mm -mm. Other than just drinking water, because as I said, I'm not particularly good at it. I'm getting better, but we're not going to do a year in pixels because that's a daily touch type thing. So we can flip over from that. Can you tell that I got a little sticker happy on this one? I had <laughs> this sticker book, which was all these physical health stickers, but they're in the most like punch you in the face kind of colors. It's very like active wear colors in my mind. Um, so I didn't really find myself using them. I think I was very optimistic in purchasing them, but anyways. So physical health bingo, already got that. Non-scale victories. I like the idea of that, and I think that that's going to be something that I put in my, like, tiny wins slash milestones. So we can just put that in here. NSV. So by non-scale victories, we mean things that aren't related just to, like, the number on the scale, effectively. Um, especially if, like, you know, part of your physical health goal is about weight loss, you know? Uh, so what are the kind of things that show that you're making progress or, like, you know, show that you're headed in the right direction without just being like, hey, the number on the scale went down. Um, so that, for instance, could be energy levels, clothing sizes. It could be like I said the other day, I just, I woke up feeling actually genuinely rested. I'm like, what is this? This feels very new. Um, so it could be something like that. I'm flipping over. We have another kind of miles tracker or like distance tracker. Uh, meals to try. I like the idea of eat the rainbow. <laughs> it's just like a fun challenge. I'm not putting that kind of stuff in my journal, I think. Oh, maybe. It would be nice to have a list of vegetables I don't hate. <laughs> <laughs> so just plant food I don't hate plant food I like uh it's this hard thing because I find and let me know if you're the same is that we often tell ourselves you know certain things about the way we are okay and the one that uh always comes to mind for me is like I don't like exercise okay we tell ourselves this over and over again and it gets to the point I'm like, do I actually dislike exercise or have I just built exercise up in my mind to be this really kind of like uncomfortable and confronting thing to the extent where I just like kind of avoid it because I think it's supposed to be a bad time? Like, 
exercise doesn't have to be a bad time. You know, you, you can do exercise in ways that don't completely suck. And yes, you know, they are often going to be a little bit uncomfortable, especially if you live a very sedentary life like I do, but they don't have to be <laughs> as shit as you keep telling yourself they are, you know? Um, similar idea with like healthy eating. And it's 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 one of those things like I've built up this kind of like picture or maybe identity, I suppose, in my mind of being like, I'm the person that doesn't enjoy healthy food. But that's not true. Like I do actually quite enjoy healthy food. Like I've come to realize that I just actually like really like roasted broccoli <laughs> randomly. Um, but it's not it's not something that I would really kind of like it doesn't fit into my own kind of picture of myself at the moment. Like my own picture of Jess currently doesn't include an enjoyment of of baked broccoli <laughs> or roasted broccoli. So I'm like, maybe we just need to expand that a little bit, you know, kind of break out of that identity box a little bit and say like, you know, I am possible of growth and I am allowed to enjoy roasted broccoli. You will not catch me eating a roasted cauliflower though. Blah. Anywho. So off subject, does Go Wild W V W R come to the UK? I don't think the, the Go Wild conference comes to the UK. I think they've only ever had it in the US. Um, yeah, roasted veggies are actually really good. And I think that, like, I, I need to experiment more with roasted veggies. Uh, yeah, except for not cauliflower. No. <laughs> like, let's see. Sushi is healthy. I love sushi. Sushi's great. Um, I find that oftentimes, like, when I make sushi at home, I maybe put not necessarily like too much rice, but like more rice than is necessary, I suppose, to put in it. Like I could use less and then up the veggie count a little bit in that way. But anywho, so other idea is a physical health 2323 is in 2023 because this layout was made in preparation for 2023. Um, So that's another possibility. But yeah, I do think that there are some kind of identity boxes that I've put myself in or kind of like stories about myself that I keep telling myself and that I've told myself for such a long time that I've kind of just accepted them as fact and it's not true. Like the, the story that I tell myself about not enjoying healthy food, it's not true. Like I do enjoy healthy food. I just don't. It's not my default. It's not where my mind defaults to when I think about like preparing food for myself. Um, so something that I can <laughs> look at. Have you tried deep fried, <laughs> what, deep fried battered cauliflower and justice for cauliflower? No, no justice for cauliflower. <laughs> Boo hiss to the cauliflower. What is this? There we go. Here's here's the cauliflower. There we go. No me gusta. No. <laughs> cauliflower isn't for me, but I think it, it, it might, again, it might just be one of those things that I just tell myself, maybe I actually do like cauliflower. I don't think I do. I don't really want to test it out. Um, I don't really have a lot of inclination to test it out. I'd rather just stick with my, my roasted broccoli, but anyhow. So um, I'm just going to put this down as lies that I tell myself. <laughs> I think it would be good to kind of explore those a little bit. Um, it's like the idea of like, I don't like salad. I'm like, don't you like salad? Or do you just not like like boring cos lettuce, iceberg lettuce in a bowl with cherry tomato salad? Like, you know, the, the ones that the ladies hold in the pictures and they're laughing. They're like, haha, oh, salad, you're so funny. Like, I don't like those salads, maybe. Maybe there are other salads that I do like. So... I would like to explore these lies that I tell myself um, and and kind of like try and confront them. It's this idea of like when we tell ourselves this lie or there's this like, you know, story that we've been telling ourselves for a while, we just start to kind of like get a bit of a kind of confirmation bias around it as well. So it's like, am I only seeking out things that are going to confirm what I've been already telling myself about it? So it's like, anytime I go to do exercise, am I making it like unenjoyable just by like thinking that it's going to be unenjoyable? Or if I really don't like cauliflower, is it because that I'm only exploring cauliflower in ways that I know I don't enjoy eating it um, or whatever? So it's just, it's just something, something I've been thinking about, something interesting. Um, you like wedge salads because you eat them more like meat with a knife and fork. That's cool. Um, yeah, I've only just recently seen the idea of a wedge salad. It's very interesting to me. Um, so yeah, <laughs> Brussels sprouts are the real devil veggie. 
Um, I think that the real devil veggie in my mind is a yam. It just looks, it looks like a little devil. I think it's like a little angry looking thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. Brussels sprouts, I, um, I, I haven't really had a Brussels sprout in many moons, so who knows? So um, anyway, that, that's good. All good and well. So if we flip this one closed and shove him to the side, politely, politely shoving. So these are the ideas we have so far, but we can go and find more. So obviously those are just the ones that have come from my own personal journals, ones that I've kind of written down for myself, but there are other ways to find inspiration. So we're going to go and have a little hunt. So one of the ways that we can find more inspiration for these journals, not to say that you might even need more, like, you know, if you get to a list like this and you're like, I'm feeling content that I've covered all of my bases, then it's all good. But if I think about it in terms of like, we've got one thing down for hydration so far, we've got Tiny Winds is kind of like an all over, uh, PCOS research and recommendations is kind of an all over, uh, Milestones is an all over. We have healthy health milestones. What did I write this down twice? I don't know, but we're putting it in other. I, I obviously meant something about it because I wrote it down. Uh, symptoms tracker, all good. So the rest of it's looking pretty all right. Things that we don't actually have down, though. We don't have anything down in the exercise column thus far. Uh, and we only have, like, two things in sleep, one thing in hydration. We've got four in nutrition. And then one in hygiene, hygiene, one in hygiene and three in avoiding harm. And that's not to say that you need to get like a perfect balance between them, but because these are my areas that I want to make sure that I'm, you know, touching on, focusing on, that I need to make sure that I actually have stuff that you know, allows me to do stuff on that. Um, so one of the ways that we can do this, if we just go over, go over here, go yeah. Ha ha ha. It's ChatGPT. Oh my gosh. So ChatGPT for like, you know, just getting ideas is a really good place to start. That's not necessarily to say that they're all going to be amazing. Um, and some of them might even be duplicates of what we've just looked at already. But we bring my little, my little keyboard over, we'll plonk that down. So we're just going to ask ChatGPT like, I'm trying to make a bullet journal to support my physical health. Can you give me, I don't know, 40 ideas for layouts that I can include in there to help improve my uh, hydration, sleep, exercise, <laughs> and nutrition we'll put those ones in and we'll see what it comes back with so not all of these are going to work with what we want to do but it still gives you a good starting point all right um so they have given me we just zoom this in a little bit so you can kind of actually see what they're saying as well um Hydration, they've said like a daily water intake tracker, weekly water consumption log, hydration challenge tracker, water intake goal and progress chart, water reminders, stickers or prompts, and a hydration habit tracker. Now, they are all kind of like the same kind of deal, um, but, you know, it's pitched in slightly different ways. Those ones, I don't really have much of a need to put in, uh, but one of the ones that we did already put on the list was that idea of like different ways to hydrate. So that's all good. Alrighty. So in terms of sleep, so weekly sleep quality tracker, bedtime routine checklist. So we already put a routine kind of builder on the list. That's all good. Um, sleep goal setting page. So elaborating on like, you know, why do we want to sleep better? What does that actually look like? What is kind of like metrics of success? Sleep tracker with notes on sleep quality. Um, so things that might actually affect your sleep. So caffeine and then exercise and then a bedtime affirmations or meditation page. So it could be part of like that like bedtime wind down ritual for yourself. Alrighty, exercise. So we have exercise goal slash tracker, whatnot. Uh, we've got fitness tracker with recording workouts, uh, exercise challenge. So this could be like, you know, a predetermined, predefined one. So like, you know, couch to 5k or whatever. Um, inspirational quotes to motivate you to exercise and then an exercise class schedule and attendance log. That's a cool idea. Um, in particular, like if you do, you know, 
one of the ways that you start getting your exercise in is by attending some kind of class, then having a schedule and an attendance log could be quite useful. So when it comes to nutrition, we have the grocery shopping list. Love it. Um, calorie or macronutrient intake tracker. I'm not going to probably get that granular with it, but something to include, possibly something to consider. Uh, fruit and veg intake tracker. I think that that one kind of goes alongside the idea of having <laughs> just a space to write down plant foods that I like. It's not necessarily an intake tracker, but it's more just like a space to say, hey, you do actually like uh, fruit and veg. Recipe collection page. I keep all of my recipes in OneNote, so I'm not going to need to do that. Uh, mindful eating journal and then meal prep planning page. I like the idea of meal prep and I'd like to explore that a little bit more. So that one we are going to add to my list um, as meal prep research. So recently Vogel and I went out and got a new freezer, um, like an, an additional freezer, I suppose, um, so that then we could do a lot more kind of meal prep type things of like either preparing bulk meals in advance and freezing them or just buying bulk like meat and stuff like that and freezing it so that then it's already available. You like buy it when it's on sale and then freeze it and stuff. So that kind of could be something that I kind of include with that as well. So general health, vitamins and supplements tracker, medication, symptom tracker for any chronic health conditions, uh, health goals, mind body connection page for recording thoughts and feelings related to health. Interesting. Doctor's appointments, like we said. And then we have just general self-care type deals. So self-care tracker, uh, gratitude journaling, stress relief, self-care bucket list. So those ones are a little bit more into what I would consider like the mental health, mental well-being type thing, which I wasn't including on my list in particular because mine is more focused or targeted towards physical health. But that's not to say that it doesn't end up kind of making its way into there at some point. Okay. So we didn't add a lot from that list, but that's mainly because we did a really good job of just kind of brainstorming stuff that would be useful for me to start with. But if you don't have an R&D journal that you can go back to and steal ideas from, then ChatGPT can be a really helpful starting point. Like, it doesn't need to be anything fancy. It's literally just asking it, like, hey, do you have some ideas for insert thing here? Of course, you can also go and look around the internet for, like, blogs and stuff like that. The reason that I go with ChatGPT is honestly just because it's faster. <laughs> like, it gives me some general ideas, at least for, like, search terms almost. So it's, like, having taken that list, I can now go over to Pinterest or something like that and search up, like, I don't know, daily water intake tracker or exercise goal tracker or whatever. I, like, have the words to actually use in other spaces. So... When we jump over to Pinterest, the hard part about Pinterest is that obviously it's very like visually based. It's not necessarily just like what I'm going to call like words based. <laughs> like, so, you know, searching something like physical health bullet journal and it has a bunch of different ideas in here for us. But you can already see that like some of these are like years and pixels. So they're tracking something. You actually have to like go into them though to see what it is that they are tracking. Uh, symptom trackers, mental health in your bullet journal. So that's mental, not necessarily physical. Uh, I like this idea of a procrastination log just in general as an idea, which I feel like I want to write down, even though it's not even remotely related to what I'm doing. But like procrastination log with my beautiful messy writing. <laughs> So we've got that noted down somewhere at least as an idea for something. Um, yeah, when it comes to looking through Pinterest, uh, first of all, I love the idea that it just has like a lot of kind of like visuals of like what the layouts could actually look like. That is great. The part that I find tricky though is that it often doesn't necessarily give you the widest range of ideas, I suppose, uh, because you end up with a lot of double ups. Um, so like, you know, you're going to end up with a lot of like water challenge, mindful eating challenge, measurements, trackers, that kind of stuff, like, you know, different types of uh general daily trackers for different things right so it is still like useful in terms of finding like layouts for pages and things like that but it is something that is not necessarily the most helpful all the time but 
it is a good place to look for, like if you're looking for ideas, okay? So now as we have my list of page ideas, from here I would take steps of actually going through and thinking about like, are there any duplicates? Is there anything that I need to kind of eliminate in terms of like, they're going to kind of fill the same need? So for instance, I wrote down health milestones, but I also wrote down milestones log. And I don't necessarily know what the difference between the two is supposed to be. So one of those would probably get scrapped. Um, doesn't really feel like I need to have two that are kind of the same. Um, then another thing that I'll look for is just making sure that there's nothing missing. Like, have I, you know, not given myself anything related to exercise in here? You can see, like, this exercise column is quite low so maybe I need to have something related to that and it could just be something like exercise research notes or whatnot and then from that research maybe then I end up elaborating on it into another type of layout so we're going to put down exercise research and that's not to say that you need to fill every single area. It's just that I would like to have something for every area in there, even if only like one page or whatnot. Once you've gone through, once you've decided like, yes, this is the stuff that I want to actually have in there, then it's a case of thinking about like, okay, well, how many pages is everything going to take up? Uh, what specific order do I want to put things in? Anything like that. All right. Do you guys have any questions before we kind of like wrap things up today? As said, I am, you know, going on an international trip later this week and I do have like some things that I need to get done before that. But, you know, I want to make sure that we kind of close this out in the proper way, not just like me running away when you guys still have things that you want to ask questions about. I'm feeling good about this. I know that, like I said at the very start, I'm not necessarily the best for committing to a new journal or maybe committing to a new journal too quickly, but I think that having it in here is going to be nice. It's just like a little B6. I've got 112 pages. I think it's going to be quite cute. I think in terms of decorative elements, I'm going to try and keep it fairly minimal, mainly so that then it's kind of just easier to keep up with. It's going to have light decoration, but I don't think it's even going to have the level of decoration that I had in the um in this guy. Like I think that the level of decoration on this almost is like too much for what I want to do. Plus it's not necessarily the color palette that I really want to use. I specifically picked these pens because they like matched as best as I could get to the stuff here, even though this mint green is a lot more blue than the uh, pale green that we have in this tape. But Anywho, so putting that to the side, this is looking great. We are going to have a proper setup video for this, but not before I leave. So I'm a skadoodle. I need to go start thinking about packing and when I'm actually going to wash my laundry, but have a great day. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you wanted to, make sure to go check out the video where we elaborate on those uh, physical health layout ideas. Alrighty, guys.